All right, we're back. Um, another six wines, state versus state, mate mm -hmm. versus mate, SA versus Vic. How did we go? For me, Victoria won, but I don't even know if they're Victorian. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, even know if yeah. I got it For right. For me, South Australian won, but I don't know if it's <laughs> South Australia. Alrighty, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People, where each week we blind taste half a dozen wines and tell you how much we like them, how many we'd buy, and how many we'd, how much money we'd pay for it at least. This week, something bit challenging. We are doing what we call State of Origin. For those of you outside of Australia, State of Origin is a very, very famous three-match rugby series that pits against uh, New South Wales and Queensland. But those teams are not being a, a part of this particular thing it will be South Australia versus Victoria, Barossa versus Beechworth, Yarra versus the Adelaide Hills. Who's gonna come out on top? So this is really good fun because there's always been a bit of a rivalry between South Australia and Victoria mostly based around AFL football so let's see if the wines can stack up against each other and who's gonna come out on top um, but let's not look around too much and get into it. Also like and subscribe please, thank you. <laughs> Um, back again, six more wines, but mixing it up a little bit, uh, we're doing the pairing bracket, state of origin style. So we're going to start out with the two whites, lovely, crisp, clean, elegant, um, most likely filtered and, you know, really nice sort of wheat coloured highlights. It's got this like almost like mochi lychee thing, which is really cool, but it's it's not going to be like a Gewurz kind of number, it is still like this bright aromatic thing, but it's not. It doesn't smell like it's going to be sweet. All right, so this one smell, the first one, one number one smells a little bit smokier, a little bit flintier, a little bit more fiery, whereas one number two, a little bit fruitier, a little bit softer. So based on my knowledge of Victoria and South Australia as states, South Australia is warmer, so gut instinct is leaning number one is the South Australian wine, but we'll see how they taste. Okay. So Chardonnay sort of territory, oaky, buttery. I really like that wine actually. Um, chilled down, I could drink a lot of that. Ooh. Oh, there's like a lot of acid there. There's a lot of acid there and a pithy back palate, which I think really defines the entire palate as it moves all the way through the mouth and you kind of get this wonderful little sprickly sort of, yeah, it's a pithiness. It's sort of like um, when you bite into a underripe pear uh, and you kind of get that, I don't know, I call it pithiness, but it's, it's a, like a fuzziness to it. Lovely kind of like squeeze of lime juice, nice saltiness, kind of that marg margarita style fizz. Really pristine, really pure. Nice kind of subtle texture there as well. But it does do exactly what good reasoning should do. It, it stays linear, it stays precise, and it gives you great drive and that great, fantastic acid line. Mmm, that's excellent as well. Yeah, if you watch these videos, like if you were to binge these episodes over a period of time, you would really notice my opinions on Chardonnay change quite a bit because yeah, uh, a year and a half ago drinking these wines, I'd be like, eh, no thank you, but I'm into these now. These are cool. Both Shards, a, lot, a little bit darker in color. There's obviously a little bit more extract. I'm assuming, are they, uh, are they like different varieties? Do, do they could be different varieties? Like, yep, cool, awesome. So we're just talking about white wine. All oh, right, cool. A little bit more development on this, uh, and it's sitting on that sort of just slightly savory edge. I mean, my, my initial gut feeling was like Riesling. Oh, way more broad on the palate, way more density. And it's also got more color too. It feels like it's got this kind of off dry kind of vibe to it as well. Um, it, these both feel like Rieslings and really good expressions of Riesling, uh, but very, very different. One, one's youthful, one's more textured. You know, it's hard to define which one I like more. This is already in a spot where it's like, I'm thinking about food pairing. It's not a everyday style drinker. It's got that complexity where it's, it really needs a purpose. So uh, wine number one goes to South Australia. But I might switch it up. I might switch up. I might go that this is the South Aussie because it has got this little bit of acidity in it. And I'm thinking warmer climate, fruits ripening a bit more quickly on the vines. I think that's how wine gets acid. So I'm gonna go, this one is SA and number one is Vic. I'll get a dozen of each, and South Australian wines tend to be a little bit cheaper, so I'll say that is a $40 bottle. But both really strong starters. Good job, Chardonnay producers, wherever you're from. Round two, fight. Orange wines, which are always really challenging to determine identity. Um, I'm not even gonna guess variety here because they're just, they're oranges. So we'll just go from there. Um, first one's a little bit cloudier, second one's a little bit more clear. I don't know what would that would 
say about the, the states themselves. Like, you know, thinking about Melbourne versus Adelaide and the rivers that run through them both. They're both extraordinarily cloudy. Start over here with number three. Okay. Um, it's got a bit of like sports locker room deep heat thing going on to it. Mm, awesome. Honeyed, marmalade, and not so overbearing. Not really giving me any indication as well, either of any sort of wine, what we call either like winemaker artifice or like potential winemaker fuck ups. Um, this just smells like really nice orange wine. And there's like apricot, you know, like those um, fruit bars that were like in the fruit section at the supermarket and they were like tiny, they were like those little rectangle things of just like smooshed up fruit and they were like 50 cents back in the day, but probably since, you know, I was like, you know, 11, they're probably like $7 now, um, to be quite frank. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's what this smells like. This smells like the smashed apricot one. Oh, yum. No, it's good though. I really like it. It, it's one of those orange wines that smells worse than it tastes. It tastes really yummy. Um, this is cool orange wine. This is exactly the sort of stuff that fruit and veg shop. And we used to have the, uh, like you used to sell these little like bars that you'd have at recess at school. And all these little fruits, sort of fruit stick things. And they're like soft, chewy apricots. And I used to steal heaps of them and eat them for my afternoon snack. And this is what those taste like. So big fan of this wine. Um, you know, you wouldn't do that with a red wine. It would taste disgusting. You'd have some elevage for something that you've left on skins to build up that tannin and structure. I think this is actually a feel uh, this has seen a little bit of elevage. Very elegant for the wine style. Such an intense wine style, very elegant. Uh, I would pay, uh, this is retail, I would pay like, I'd probably pay another 40 bucks a bottle for it and I would actually buy, I'd buy 12. I'd buy 12, I think it's really delicious. Bit more coppery, looks a little bit more like refined and um, elegant, um, but not as much turbidity as the first one, but still looking fantastic. Reductive, very, very flinty. What a wine. What a wine. That is incredible. Love the elevage, love the creamy back palette. Nothing really sticks out about it. And that inclusion of this sort of like a little bit of stem. Oh man, it makes me feel like I'm drinking Pinot. It makes me feel like I'm drinking Pinot, but I look at it and I don't think I am, but it, it kind of makes me feel it. Not much going on. Um, yeah, it's just a less interesting wine, I'll be honest. It doesn't smell particularly nice. There's not a lot going on in the palate. It's a little bit floral, some of those things that you would come to expect, but I definitely prefer wine number one. And for that reason, given that I'm born and raised South Australian, I'm gonna hope that it's the SA wine, so. I was hoping for one of those wines where it's like, you can just get a clothes peg, put that on your nose and enjoy it, so you don't have to smell it, but you can taste it and it's still great. But unfortunately, the reductive character has really dominated the palate too, which is a bit of a shame. I'd pay like 55 bucks a bottle for that and I'd buy 12. Um, as to where they come from, I just, I don't think I've ever encountered a wine like this, like from either state, well, definitely not South Australia. Um, I want to say it's South Aussie because it has a lower acid profile, but I'm actually going to say that this is Victorian. This wins though. That's, that's, that's up there for that one and up there for that one. At the moment, apparently, if I think it's right, Vic could probably end up winning this. Final round, fight. Now, much like State of Origin this year, uh, we've got a dead rubber for the last uh, and uh, we're, we're battling for, um, you know, not getting a clean sweep, not, uh, is it here? we're trying to save face here. So Victoria, what can you do? If I'm right, if I'm right, I could be horribly wrong. Five and six, uh, looking at them, they look sort of light and juicy, specifically this one. So I don't think we're about to get a big mouth of tannin. I don't think this is gonna be like the Barossa versus, does Yara make Shiraz? Is Yara in Victoria? I think Yara's in Victoria. Damn. <laughs> Ah, it's, I mean, I'm not from South Australia. For those who are playing at home, South Australia and Victoria are, are, are quite the rivals, but I'm continually impressed with the Victorian wines. Uh, and sometimes I actually uh, regret setting up in SA, uh, knowing full well what they can produce out. I think this wine is Victorian just because smell on the nose is just so pinpoint perfect. The pitch of this, it's like it's singing. It's so beautiful, so <laughs> spicy. So mushroomy, so like bright cranberries and young cherries and that shiitake mushroom thing is just so beautiful in this little wine. Uh, I'd drink, I'd grab two of these, no worries. That's sick. That is like plum juice, like stone fruity, bright and juicy. A Little bit of a savory finish on it as well, which means that you can convince yourself that you're drinking for a grown up, not drinking for children. We've got a lot brighter color. Shit, I can almost smell that from here. That is, it's a confected, boom, straight away. It's almost like a, a fistful of flowers just hit me in the face. 
That feels like an entirely different grape variety. I don't even think that's Pinot Noir, but it is so bright and raspberry. It is really juicy. It's so juicy and like red, like red Allen's frogs and things like that. I still think that is Victorian. I think these are both Grenaches. I like this double parking. We should do this more often, like having two to go at the same time. I like it. It's good. SA, number six. Vic, number five. And I'm basing that purely on, I think this tastes like a cooler climate wine. It's just a little bit... Um, it's funny, when I encounter confected wines, red wines, um, from South Australia, typically they're like this sort of sour cherry strawberry, but raspberry, raspberry is, is Victoria. Um, oh, I haven't seen anything that's more Victorian than that, so definitely wrong with that. I'm gonna say that's Victorian. I, I don't think it's quite as good. I'm happy to pay $35 and get half a dozen. I, I'm captivated by that. I, I drink that all the time. That could be made by a whole bunch of, a raft of amazing producers that we have here in the hills, but you know, that one wouldn't surprise me if it went the other way. Um, so I'm going one number one for all three here. Um, and I think one number one across the board is South Australian. Um, and that was pretty good fun. I'll have nine of wine number five and six of wine number six. I'll pay $40 for each. So yeah, we've got one Vic, two SA, three SA, four Vic, five Vic, six SA. Sounds completely logical to me. Let's see how Brendan and I'll go. Same price. I think, I think, I think these are worth the same uh, and I'll still buy 12. However, however, I would buy more of the wine number five. That's me. I could be right, wrong, indifferent, either way. Bunch of tasty wines. Let's see what the guys think. All right, we're back. Um, another six wines. State versus state. Mate mm -hmm. versus mate. SA versus Vic. How did we go? I like the wine a lot. The wines were great. The, all the wines were great. Excellent. There wasn't any uh, wine that I was like, nah. You reckon there was one? There was one there that was I was like, was, uh, yeah. nah, no way. Oh, well, contention. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> um, but apart from the one, everything yep. else was delicious. Yep. A couple of real highlights, yep. but everything was great. Yep. Big time. Yep. How did you go about trying to pick SA from Vic? <sighs> Like for me, I I had a thing as like, yep, that makes sense. All of these are right. Um, but that being said, I am so unconfident mm. like on all of it. Like that's the thing about you know the, the two regions and like Australian wine in general is that everyone is vet unless it's like a really traditional style, you can do kind of whatever you want. The the no mm. rules thing about Australian wine really applies. So every wine could come from anywhere. Mm. Um, but the, yeah, there's nothing like particularly typical um, that reflects exactly where it's from. So who knows? Um, so, uh, but I, I had a bit of a theory. I thought every first one was South Australian, every second one was Victorian. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I ah. flip flopped a, a little on it, mm. Um, mm. and I found it really difficult because it's like an extra question. Yeah. So like, I'm thinking about what are these two varieties that are like, you know, because there, could there be a varietal difference? Like if one's yep. showcasing like higher acid immediately, I think Victorian because of cooler regions, like yep. more predominant to cooler regions but maybe it's a low acid grape and uh, you know they just don't then it's like it's at the south australian victorian thing but then there's the price component and then yeah. it's, like, it's just so it's another whole layer of complexity for me i mean we that was the other thing like for me victoria won but i don't even know if they're victorian yeah, exactly. yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. even know if yeah. i got it for right for me south australian one but i don't know if it's south australia and I, i'm surprised by that i generally am a big fan of victorian wines more mm. so than south mm. australian wines and so like maybe i'm completely wrong let's see one number one or uh, well, one number one and two one, yeah, yeah, let's see, let's go. So, uh, what was our favourite between the two? Uh, the one, the first one. The yeah, first one was my favourite, to be first honest. One was like my favourite. Bright, fresh, pure Rizza. Of the of the whole bracket, these two were the the more most underwhelming wines. Very quiet, like achiever, I think wine number one. But that's why I pipped it. It's the acidity. Yeah. Wine number two. I want. I'm fascinated to know what that is because there, it smells like a Rizza, no acid. <laughs> I just. I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, know what that it is. Old. Old Viognier, maybe? I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I was drinking before, but I was like, yeah, these are both Chardonnays. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> they could be. No, Honestly, but they're not. They're, really they're not now. Like, yeah. when I was drinking them, I was like, yeah, this has got all the characteristics. I've just tasted them again. That tastes nothing like what I remember I, no, them tasting no, like. No, to be honest, dude, like, I had a Victorian Chardonnay last night that like tasted very similar to that first one. Little, like, a yeah, little bit different, but like. in the Chablis path. Yeah, and 100%. Yeah, point. but they scream Riesling now that we're drinking them yeah. together. But, <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, everything I said about those wines is right relevant because they just don't taste how I thought they did. Like I wanted a dozen of each of them. I don't know if I like either of them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, first one of the day, like, you uh, know, it's always going to challenge yeah. you. But um, so I went, uh, first one was South Australian, second one was Victorian. I went the opposite. Victorian I went Victorian left. SA. Yeah, yeah, I went Victoria SA. All right, Lucky, what, what was it? 
Hey, okay, nice. that's good. Yeah. That's, that's the okay. slot. Okay, okay. Cheap. It makes number two even more interesting in my mind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What were the varieties? 30 and 30, 33 and 30. What were cool. the wines? What were the wines? Yeah, pull the wines yeah. out. Yeah, now this is really challenging now. We just have to pull two wines out at once and you're holding a camera lucky. Yeah. So we've got wine number one. Victoria. Victoria. King, King Valley. Valley. Sponsor um, and Brown, amazing. And then Sponsor Michael Hall, Sange de Pigeon. What the? Okay. Isn't a Blanc. Isn't that Pinot Gris? I think, that's Pinot Gris? I think it might be seven in Blanc. Blend. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. And this this is not reasoning at all. The this uh, Schmalzer and Brown. What is this it? is huh. Pinot Gris, Sap Blanc, Riesling, and Sylvana. Well, from Whitlands and Whitfield in the King Valley. I, I have to be so impressed right now with the different drop crew. For, you know, you might look at that and be like, well, that's a bit of a silly wine to compare to a Chardonnay. No, because they're comparing it to a Musket of Petty Grain Riesling Crucian Vidello. Crucian? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, it's a, it's, it's a field blend, plays a field blend. Yeah. yeah. From one from Victoria, one from SA. Now, so, yeah, see, we got tricked into the variety path. Mm. Um, and then the varieties kind of pin each other going to them. But, mm. but with that being said, both of these wines reflect where they're from. Mm. Very much so. And we thought wine number one was the better one. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Victoria yeah. clocks one. Yeah, I'd say so. Victoria yeah. clocks one. Oh, right. I forgot we used to do State of Origin with like Victoria versus the All Stars of AFL. I forgot. Oh, oh, that's man. what this is. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. That's what we should have done. Shit. <laughs> damn it. I kept on referencing rugby. Still blame. Who was the Collingwood Ruckman who got injured in that game? So they're like, we're never doing it again. Josh, someone oh, got injured. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Balls. 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 Balls sports. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, now bring it back. Bring back State of Origin football. That was the yeah, fucking best. It was peak. Um, I can imagine it now. Amazing. Anyways, number two. Uh, th this was one wine that I absolutely adored. Yeah. Okay. And one wine that I just did, that was just um, too reductive to enjoy. Okay, so which was which? The one on the left was absolutely delicious. Bob. Mango juice, like, <laughs> yeah. like papaya, um, great like mandarin juice. The second one is just party. Second one was my one alana. <laughs> what? I loved it. I thought it was perfect, perfectly poised. I thought it was so boring. Amazing. I've never oh, met man. someone who would like, you know, is in a lift and someone farts and just even... goes, oh, that's bad. Yeah. It must have blown off. Check it out. Check it out. I can't pick up any reduction. Yeah, that has. Oh, yeah, it's it's it has blown off. There's a stemminess to I'm it. Glad. It's kind of kind of. Um, yeah, I just thought, thought it was all class. I mean, both both I bought twelve of. Um, I bought I bought both uh, twelve. I thought it was SA and Vic, left to right. Uh, and I spent 40 to 55. Like, I, I thought they were, mm -hmm. like, I was happy to spend a bit of money on it. Mm. Um, both really good. I thought number four pipped it, but. Yeah, I called SA Vic just Same. because why not? And. Uh, we're all in alignment there, I believe. SA Vic. Vic. Yep. Um, I thought that was, yeah, everything you're saying, like yummy apricot after school bar type yep. deal. And exactly. then the other one just, I don't know, like, that, I think comparing it to that to that, I was just like, if I want to drink an orange wine, I want to drink yeah. that. I've it literally tastes like oranges. That. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, I really, yeah, I love that. So I had one. a dozen and then I had one bottle of the... I had a dozen and a glass. I did go, I did go fast and it was very, very reductive, but I'm glad that it, you know, it blew off and I would yeah. definitely, like, going back, I'd change my but purchase. But I said, I bought 12 of each and happy to defer to you guys. Yeah, it's a clean on, sweep. It's un undefeated. Uh, wine number three, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, what were... Uh, I'm going to SA to Vic to the right. SA to Vic. Yeah. SA to Vic. Um, I wanted to pay 38 bucks for the first one and 40 for the second. Yeah. Magic number. I said 38 for both because they're orange. cloudy and orange, we're just going to make it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Okay. 38's a good number. That's a great it's number. It's a number. great number. <laughs> yes! <laughs> See? It works! It Every always time, works. man. Look, you know. <laughs> don't even put a barcode on those bottles. Like, we everyone under, knows. Yeah, we understand the Australian wine market better than everybody else. Yeah, so, we've know. got it. We've got to come. <laughs> don't worry. Don't even ask anyone else. <laughs> yeah. All right. 38 Anyways. bucks. And what was the second one? Uh, okay. Undervalued. Yeah. Must be, must be South Australia. Must be then. South Australia. <laughs> Victorian's a little bit more, sure. Wine number one. Oh, hey, this is awesome. Yeah, wine number one there. Yeah. And then Cotier. This is um, Gary. Yeah, Pinot yeah. Gris. Yeah. Skinsy Pinot Gris. Skinsy one, one, one. Pinot Gris. I mean, yeah. I didn't even say it, but. I think I might have actually said Skinsy Pinot Gris. Yeah, right. I'm always saying Skinsy yeah. Pinot Gris. And this is Skinsy. Skinsy yeah, Chardonnay. Chardonnay? At nine and a half percent that alcohol. Is the best skinsy Chardonnay. I've From Piccadilly. Best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else would grab Piccadilly Chardonnay and be like, fuck it, we're just gonna put it on skins, we'll see what happens. Yeah, pick it at nine by me and just be like, fuck it, let's have a go. That's amazing, <laughs> that is amazing. Oh no, and then it also says clone secret. <laughs> It's the secret species of Chardonnay. I'll tell you. That's, that's, that's what happens when you actually don't know the answer. Just say it's a secret. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that means Victoria's clocked one. SA's, SA's. clocked one. We are moving into the decider. <clears throat> 
I have a feeling I already know what you guys think of the last two. What do we think of the last and two, Brandon? And I have a feeling I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. Because I thought wine number five was better than wine number six. I thought they were both amazing, but I think you guys love wine number six. What did you, I had wine number five as my I had wine number five as uh, my favourite as well. Just ignore me, cut out that last <laughs> bit. You know, or embarrass the shit out of me, I don't care. Also I thought it was Victorian, unfortunately. Yeah. You that was Victorian? I yeah. thought that was Victorian. Could, that could easily be Victorian. It could easily be Victorian. It could be South Australia. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the <laughs> that's thing. The both, thing. <laughs> both of these wines, like, I think they're both Pinot Noirs, um, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, the, the, definitely, this one ha like, just has to be, surely. Like just has that's to be, Pinot. That's that Pinot. has to be Pinot Noir. This one could be, but it also could be something else. I thought S A Pinot. Yeah. Victorian Gamay. Victorian Gamay. Damn, that's not a bad shout. Um, could also be Adelaide Hills Gamay and Victorian could Pinot. Be. Could quite, be. quite comfortably. It's like, it is one of those things. Um, it's a cider. Yeah, but I yeah. See, I didn't. I was looking at like looking at them in the glasses. I was like, that looks like Pinot to me. But then mm. I smelled them and they didn't smell quite like floral or uh, mm. Pinot-y mm. enough for me. Mm. Yeah. So I ended up going back to my uh, calling card, which is the uh, Chardonnay of Reds Grenache for both of them. <laughs> I don't mind that as a shout, the Chardonnay of Reds. The thing that's that me off is this potentially being SA is low acid. But mm. I think you're right, like that could be a Grenache with a little bit of bunch. Mm. Someone's oh. been a little bit weird with it, yeah. you know? It's, and that could be a Grenache that someone's not being weird with. I don't think there's, enough, they could there's, both there's, enough, there's not enough booze on this to be Grenache. Yeah, fair, um, very at, fair. And it's just that bad. There is on that. Yeah, there is. Look at the legs. Oh, we're gonna go. Um, anyways, um, but we we all agree wine number five, no matter what state, is the is the superior wine here. Mm -hmm. um, the second wine also very delicious, but just not also quite as excellent. Good. Yeah, I had nine and six bottles, like it was spitting hairs. Yeah, for me. I had six bottles as well, but I had a dozen for that I thing. Twelve I, and twelve, fifty-eight bucks for both. Yeah, I was I was sixty bucks for that, um, and I was thirty-five for the second one. Forty and forty. Yeah, flat. That's good. That's actually really good. What do we got, Lucky? Whoa! Okay, that's that's, that's awesome. definitely peanut. <laughs> it's gotta be. I would it's gotta be, be. Yeah, seventy-five dollar Australian gamay. Maybe one day. Or oh, just yeah. the Pinot. Well done. Yeah, excellent. Well done. Yeah, beautiful. And Steve, panel Panel's Grenache. Smart Grenache as well. Grenache! Yeah. Yeah. He's done it! He's done it! Uh, He's done it. It's a good rule of thumb, the Chardonnay of reds. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good rule of thumb. I actually really I enjoy like that. That, that is my favourite. Light thing. red, no, light red, not much Flaring acid, doesn't taste like uh, flowers, Grenache. must be Grenache. Um, um, so guys, I, I have to, to say for the, for, you know, the, well you're a ex-Queenslander by yeah. birth. Queenslander by yeah. birth. I'm sorry, Henry, but Victoria wins this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No. Look, um, and that, and that's a really good matchup <laughs> to finish up on as well because, like, that I think you know is one, like one of the best producers in McLaren Vale, making the best red variety for McLaren Vale. And what he's good at as well. He's so yeah. passionate about Grenache. And yeah. He Grenache and Nebbiolo are his things, um, yeah. and he makes some of the best Grenache. But that's a, and the smart Grenache is a very very good vineyard. Very but smart. this is the this is the next dude. This is the this is the champ. This is the the new wine guy, and uh, what he's doing in Mass. Macedon is unbelievable. Macedon, and man. Macedon for Pinot. Macedon for Pinot. Macedon for fucking everything. Well, actually, no. Smart. Just cool climate varieties. Like, just... Uh, um, <laughs> Macedon for Tarita, let's go! <laughs> uh, I've had I've Macedon for Lagrange. Shout out, Cobalt. Um, but, yeah, no, like, he... Yeah, that, that wine's incredible. Jesus that, Christ, that wine's incredible. That um, amazing. So, yeah, big wins. Um, big wins. Uh, you know, I, I see, yeah, I, I thought I was going to be um, all about... Victorian wines, and I tell you, it was. It was. Yeah. Even, yeah. even by not trying, it's visceral, man. What was, uh, visceral. if you could pick one of them out of the six today, what was one of the lineup? It's, it's either that, that Pinot or um, the uh, I, Copper I, Vine. I'd, I'd jump with the Pinot. I'd jump with the Pinot. Uh, yeah, yeah well, I'm, I'm happy to go out there. What do you want? Do you want, do you want the orangey? Uh, I think the orange is the most interesting out of the lot, but I think that that's probably the one that I'd drink the most of. Yeah, I'd definitely drink the most of that Pinot. Um, yeah, no, like, yeah, let's let's go Doug's. Doug, uh, you know, Josh Cooper's Doug Vineyard Pinot Noir. We are very lucky to get that because that's made in minuscule quantities and uh, that uh, little orange wine there as well from Papa Vi is awesome too. So it's, those are the two best ones. Check them out. Sure. Uh, Vic, well done. Uh, well done, Victoria. Back, back at it again. Um, Calm the dogs. Damn it! <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, I will see you next time. Bye. What? <laughs> Ding, 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 ding.